similar area. Um, yeah. And you're, so you're saying like it kind of like the, you know, the, the events of yesterday weren't really running through your guys' minds at this point. You had kind of just written it off. Definitely not. Not at all. We didn't even think about it once because we had our rifles with us. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, again, we were checking trail cameras and we're in the wilderness. We have guns with us. You never know out there. Um, but it, it, it didn't even enter our minds. Okay. No, not even slightly. All right. So uh, you you know, got to the campsite. The the geese are gone. And uh, you guys say, oh, that's weird. And then you continue on with your night. Take us through it. Yeah. So I, I grab a couple stones. He grabs a couple. We make a nice little fire ring. Um, he actually, my friend Christian, used to be an Eagle Scout or is an Eagle Scout. So he got the fire started, you know, within a minute right away. Started up. Uh, we drank a beer or two, and by that time, all of a sudden, it's dark. So we said, "Okay, you know what? It's time to head back." You know, we're and we were just hanging out, talking about where are you going to hunt tomorrow. I think I'm going to go to this spot. Okay, I think I might try that. And we used his trail cam, so I told him he could hunt in a better spot, <laughs> and uh, so he was happy about that. So now, again, it's dark, and I was like, "Okay, let's put this fire out." So. He's wrapping up, uh, you know, picking up any cans, whatever, getting the car ready. So I think, and I'm, uh, I got to pee on the fire to put it out. Not that I was really worried about it because it is a swampier area there, but I was like, what the hell? I have to go anyway. So I'm peeing on the fire. And as a joke, he right behind me, maybe 10 feet behind me, um, puts his coyote call and he starts playing like coyote, you know, fighting coyote growls and i was like freaked out right away because it was an electronic fox pro call and for like two three seconds i was like freaking out i was like oh my gosh but then i i recognized the sound because we had gone coyote hunting um a couple nights earlier so i was like oh you know good one dude like how about this why don't you try playing the alpha male howl just you know just for fun what the heck and he plays it and that's when it happens. So he presses the, you know, on the little remote control you have for the Fox Pro, he presses alpha male coyote howl, which is what the name of the uh, call was. Within, I don't know, two seconds, if that, as soon as the howl ended, we heard what to this day was the scariest noise I've ever heard in the woods just a a humongous loudest thing ever scream roar yell that i mean that was just absolutely just a deep deep guttural scream 80 yards away from us or less just right out of the sight line and we both just i mean it was it was chilling I, it's hard to describe the feeling that you know you get when that overcomes you it was just the loudest and and mo- most terrifying noise you could ever imagine. Just a huge scream. And then immediately following that, we heard what sounded like uh, a tree just being snapped in half. You know, a, a couple inch thick sapling just being snapped in half. And as we heard that, we just absolutely freaked out, sprinted for the Jeep. I mean, again, we're in this little pull-off that's, you know, maybe eight feet wide. He's trying to back his Jeep out of it. I'm turning around trying to rip my rifle out of the case and grab grab bullets because here I am thinking that, you know, in the windshield and the head, you know, through the through the windshield and the headlights, I'm going to see a, some humongous animal, some creature sprinting at us come to attack us. And I'm trying to grab my rifle and we were just absolutely freaking out. It was just the loudest I mean, it's almost, it's, it's pretty much indescribable unless you've experienced it every, even now, just talking about it, all the hair on my neck and my arm just stands up. It was terrifyingly loud. It it almost sent a shockwave through you. That's how loud it was. Sure. Would you say, would you say you're like feeling it in your, in your body? It was so loud. Completely. Yeah. Like it, 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 you know, you feel it in your chest. It was that loud. It, it almost made it seem like, you know, your head was shaking. That's how loud it was. It was un, unbelievable. And then you guys trying to back down, you know, it's like it's like from a movie trying to just get no, out absolutely. of that road. It was, and it was unbelievable. You can, pic- you can picture, you know, you the Jeep backing up. You're looking out the windshield just 
praying you don't see anything come into the road in front of the lights. Oh, uh, no. And, yeah. and, and as, as we're doing that, I'm telling him, I was like, dude, if something comes out, I'm shooting it through your windshield. Like, so, sorry, your windshield's getting sacrificed, but, you know, we're not dying right now. Sure. I'm grabbing, and, you know, I had my 308 with me, and I was like, ah, this is a little sketchy now. It was pretty unbelievable. Oh, man. That's, uh, yeah, that would be terrifying. So, yeah, I mean, just hearing that scream in general, but on top of that being you know, X amount of miles deep in the woods. It's nighttime at this point. There's nobody and, around but you guys. Oh, yeah. definitely not. And and with the tree breaking in half, because imagine what kind of strength it would take to just break sure. a tree in half immediately. Th- this was a show of anger. Um, I guess I would, I think now thinking about it, I think it was a territorial display. Um, I I I believe that the first two nights were sort of, I guess, warnings or just to let us know, hey, I'm here. This is our area, sort of, by Bigfoots, um, by Sasquatch. And I believe that the final night, the third night, we were in, really encroaching in whatever it may have been, um, a fan, you know, a family nesting site or uh a male's or female's uh territory and by the third time of us you know us same two guys being there i think this creature had enough and, and said this is it oh it, I, th- I think it was a, a yell at us to leave now the last a final warning of sorts yeah it certainly sounds like that's exactly what was happening especially given that you guys played that you know that alpha howl uh, right before that. It's just like you're gonna, you're going to play it that. It was an gonna, answer. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to raise you up to show that that is actually not what's happening right now. I am here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There, that it was showing that it was in you know for sure the alpha. Yeah, in, in the terrifying, in the just so terrifying. Uh, and you know, not I mean, not seeing something too is, you know. You can argue it's even more frightening when you can't see what just made that sound and then broke the tr- snap the tree in half in one you know quick snap, knowing whatever that is, it's just over there, and you yeah, can't see for it's sure, almost, it's in, in, I mean, it could end up feeling worse at that point, and the fact that it's nighttime now, just terrifying, absolutely yeah, I mean, terrifying, just just on the edge of the sight line. So again, this little clearing we're in. And it's, it's surrounded by swampy and you know, a black spruces, dark, low hanging branches where you really can't see far. And I mean, just just out of sight, you know, e- even at whatever it may have been, seven seven fifteen something like that at night, where you you know you still have a little bit of a visibility even in the woods like that. It was it was just on that edge, so you yeah. Like you were saying, you don't know how big the animal is. That made the, how how truly massive it is because, of course, it wasn't a bobcat, bear, coyote, any other animal. Uh, again, I've hunted and trapped my entire life. I've been in the woods how many times? I know the sights, the sounds, the smells, everything of of the native creatures, and it, this was this was something else, sure. and it absolutely was not a person because for you know for someone to try and hoax us with wood knocking or something like that okay you can maybe see that two days in a row that's a little less likely three days in a row and a mile and a half away it, it's impossible it just wasn't happening mm-hmm. you know it wasn't another person it wasn't somebody playing a trick on us we, you know again who's going to do that to do you know, to armed, armed guys. Yeah, absolutely. It's not going to happen. Absolutely. And um, I'm willing to bet that you can probably picture in your head, you know, what you were seeing looking out that the front of that Jeep as he was backing it up, looking at the road oh, you know, in reverse. I'm sure you replay that in your mind pretty frequently. In, in, in my mind, as I'm turning, I didn't want to take my eyes off it because he was facing backwards to back out. Yep. I, you know, he was in an old, old school Jeep. I was turning around to grab my gun out of the case, and I pretty much 
100% expected to turn back around. And, and the, what, what the image that popped into my mind was, uh, if you've seen the, the Patterson Gimlin film, mm-hmm. the, you know, from 1967, the, I forget the name that the nickname for the, Patty. For the female Sask- Patty. That's it. Yeah. I, I full, fully expected to see that about, you know, six feet in front of the bumper. And I was like, this is it. This is it. We're yeah, done. Sure. First we took its fish and now it's really pissed. <laughs> I really did. That's what I thought. I, that's what I anticipated turning around and seeing because sure. after two days of wood knocking and now the scream, it was, it was just too much. It was all culmination of, of pretty much territorial events yeah. is, is how I see it. Sure. Sounds like, and so what was Christian's reaction like during this whole, you know, this whole scene? Was, I assume it's similar to yours, but did he have any you know specific thoughts on it? I'm sure you guys have talked about this since. Yeah, for sure. So as much as I may sound like I'm freaking out, you know, even now, five, six years later after it happened, he was freaking out much more than me because, again, now he had an extra um, encounter. He had one more encounter than I did even. So he had two nights of knocking. I only had one that I experienced. So he was even, I guess you would say further, uh, enthralled with this. And he knew this was something trying to come after him or, 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 you know, or trying to intimidate him at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, geez, I could imagine. So tell me what was the, what was the car ride like on the way back to Paul Smith? So you guys, you guys eventually backed up and at some point yeah. were able to turn around. So what was the conversation like in that ride between the two of you? Yeah. So the car ride, I'll tell you, this was fast. <laughs> we, <laughs> sure. we, we booked it back to campus pretty much. Got into our dorm building. All our friends were hanging out as always. And pretty much they see us both panicking, you know, pretty, you know, sweating out of our eyes and, They're like, guys, you know, what the heck, you know, what are you guys doing? And my dorm room in particular was kind of the hangout room. You know, all all our friends lived right around us. So at any given time, I would come into my dorm room and there would be eight, you know, 10 of my friends there. Even if myself and my roommate wasn't there, they would just hang out in there. And so we burst through the door and a bunch of dudes are in there and we're instantly freaking out. Like, guys, we just had a Bigfoot encounter. And they're all saying, oh, you know, you're full of crap, this, that, the other thing. And we told them, no, like two days ago, Christian heard knocking. Yesterday, we both heard it. And then now today, a mile and a half away, a mile and a quarter away, we just got screamed at by the loudest yell ever and heard a tree break in half. And half of my friends were like crazy gung-ho, like, yo, let's go get our guns right now. Because a lot of people don't know at Paul Smith, you could keep two guns and a bow on campus oh really so i didn't know that almost all of us had a shotgun a rifle and a bow with us sure um and so they're like let's go right now let's grab our guns and take us back and let's go shoot this thing i said hell no and christian said hell no we are not going back there and that i mean that pretty much was it we're like guys we're not going back there and you're not going back there yeah. either because this Wise was terrifying decision. and, and 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 I don't know how it would end, especially considering, you know, maybe it was a family group, uh, you know, yeah. of these creatures. This could have been some sort of, uh, I mean, who knows what would happen. Sure. I, I, don't, I don't even want to think about what could have happened. But we said, guys, we're not going back and you're not going back either. So no. it was pretty crazy. That's the wise decision. It's also nighttime now, too. And uh, yeah, oh, you don't yeah, want that, to tempt fate again. At that time, again. it was maybe nine, or, you know. 830, eight thirty, eight something. Yeah, eight thirty probably. Sure, sure. Now, uh, did it did uh that encounter? And I know you've had another Bigfoot encounter, and we'll get to that after. It's in a different place. But um, did that encounter, you know, change anything about how you go into the woods? You know, are you more cautious, or do you do you block it out? Do you not think about it? Has that changed anything for you, being a lifelong hunter and woodsman? Well. Now, more recently, after graduating college and, and stuff, I'm pretty much exclusively hunting on the island. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm not really leaving Long Island much for hunting. I go to my lake house and hunt a little bit, but that's far enough south 
that I feel that it might not 